Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. This is like my fifth or sixth video today, so I appreciate you guys hanging in there. I'm gonna try to edit all these and get them up as soon as I can, hopefully all of them before the trailer drops tomorrow, but if I miss one or two, you're probably seeing this after my trailer reaction. Uh, but this, I wanna talk about comic books, because we haven't done that in a while. I needed a little bit of a break with some of the stuff we were getting into, and I was kind of hesitant on getting into the Matt Gargan stuff, because as I was reading it, I was like, ah, you know, rereading it, I was like, I'm not so energetic about this. I remember liking this a lot more when it first came out. But then I did another pass. I was like, you know what, maybe just because I've been reading so much lately and uh, and just kind of burning out a little bit, you know, doing too many videos as I'm, you know, recording my fifth or sixth one today. Uh, but still, like, I, for a while there, I was, like, starting to do a little too much. I think between that and work, it was just overwhelming. So today, having being at my day off and not having anything else planned for today and not adding writing on top of everything else today, I was like, you know what, this will be fine. We can talk comics again. So I'm going to dub this episode kind of the origin of Matt Gargan as the, the Venom, the new Venom, uh, because we're going to talk about three different books here. We're going to talk about the last four issues of the Marvel Knights Spider-Man run by, uh, by Mark Millar. We're also going to talk briefly about Civil War, uh, by Mark Millar and Steve McNiven, who was the artist on that one. And then also we're going to talk about this one shot here called Civil War Choosing Sides. And the uh, story in line in particular is going to be by Mark uh, Guggenheim and uh, Lionel Francis Yu on the art. So those are going to be the three stories we talk about in today's episode. And we're going to go pretty briefly through most of them because we're just going to get the, the, the broad strokes of who Matt Gargan is. And so you kind of know what kind of character he is, what kind of venom he's starting out to be, and get hopefully excited for the direction we're about to go in as we talk about him in Thunderbolts and we talk about him in the Dark Avengers. It gets really crazy from here on out, but we're also on this journey going to learn about Anti-Venom and, and Eddie Brock's triumphant return. So without further ado, let's dive into the origin here of Matt Gargan Venom. So the first thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to do real brief as well. Uh, this is the last four issues of the Mark Millar Marvel Knight Spider-Man run. Obviously we talked about that recently with uh, issues, uh, I think, five through eight we talked about. It was called Venomous in one trade paperback. They collected all as called Venomous. And that was when Angelo uh, bought or auctioned, you know, like uh, Eddie Brock was auctioning off the Venom symbiote. And he was going to take that money and give it to charity. And that was going to be his last good, you know, cause on earth, the last good thing he did on earth. But then when he saw the suit go on Angelo and kill innocent people at Peter Parker's, you know, reunion, uh, he realized that he released a monster into the world. And then he decided to take his own life uh, and kind of full circle back to where we met him back, you know, in Amazing Spider-Man 300, where he admitted to going to church to ask for forgiveness because he was going to commit suicide. And then he came across the suit and became Venom. So when he sees that he let Venom out in the world and now Venom is unhinged and he's on, you know, someone who doesn't have his, uh, you know, moral code, uh, he's basically like, all right, I failed. And so he cuts his wrists and bleeds out. Luckily, we find out he lived, and we talked about that story, but before that story came out, we had the ending of Marvel Knights Spider-Man, and what happened in it is we had this mysterious guy who was, like, prank calling, or not really prank calling, but I guess he was calling and threatening Peter Parker and saying, like, look, I have your Aunt May, you know, we should meet, uh, you know, finally we should meet after all these villains came after Spider-Man, and I think the original reason why I didn't like this story uh, was because Mark Millar mentioned that it was kind of a parody story in a way. He was doing his version of Batman Hush, and he called this Spider-Man Shush. That's what they called it around the Marvel offices when this came out. And that kind of irked me a little bit because I was like, oh, it just showed Mark Millar didn't really have a lot of original ideas. He can only build off of what other people have done. Or if he did have an original idea or something that I liked, um, something like Wanted, for example, then when he would do other stories like Old Man Logan, he would just take the same basic concept and just do that or he, and then mix it with the movie Unforgiven. So to me, I never really was full on board with him as a writer for the most part. Um, but, you know, this, this Marvel Knights thing has some moments in it that I thought were pretty good to give the guy credit. And so in the final four issues, we learned that the person calling Peter, the person who kidnapped Aunt May, is Matt Gargan. And Matt Gargan, for those of you who don't know, is the Scorpion. And the way he became the Scorpion actually was he was just like a regular guy uh, at first and kind of like sometimes got caught up in crimes and, and things like that. But he made a deal with J. Jonah Jameson and J. Jonah Jameson like invested or had some money into this secret project that he would hope to create something that would take down Spider-Man because he was just so against Spider-Man. And, uh, and in a roundabout way though, he was creating something way worse than Spider-Man. And what happened is that project led to the creation of the Scorpion and, and Matt Gargan becoming the Scorpion and being bonded with this suit that started to drive him crazy over time. And so now Mac has been separated from that suit, I guess by the help of Norman Osborn. And Norman Osborn said, hey, look, if I ever get captured, this is a 
contingency plan I have to get back at Spider-Man. So when Spider-Man at the beginning of this book in issue one took down Green Goblin and arrested him, now the the plan went into you know a fruition. And so Matt Gargan has the suit removed from him, courtesy of Norman Osborn, I believe, and then he goes and kidnaps Aunt May. And so uh, he's the one who's holding Aunt May hostage, and he's trying to get Spider-Man to do specific things and help Norman Osborn escape. And he wants Spider-Man to bust Norman Osborn out, even though Spider-Man's the reason Norman Osborn was captured. And if that doesn't happen, then Matt Gargan has permission to kill Aunt May. And so those are the stakes here. So in the end, what happens is Matt Gargan, after revealing all that to Spider-Man, kind of gets away from Spider-Man. I don't know why Spider-Man just didn't like, you know, go crazy on him there, but I guess he was like, oh, I gotta find Aunt May, so I need him alive for now. But when uh, Matt Gargan goes back to his apartment or the place he's kind of squatting at for the time being, he comes across the symbiote and the symbiote sees kind of the hatred he has for Spider-Man and sees a common uh, commonality between them. And so they bond. And so now Matt Gargan has become the new Venom. And even to the point where the symbiote will sometimes create a scorpion tail out of uh, Matt Gargan's back to strike at enemies with and, and you know poison them in a way. So Matt Gargan is full on now Venom. And so in that storyline, he teams up with Norman Osborn who gets broken out and they form the Sinister 12 and he's one of the members of the Sinister 12 now and they fight Spider-Man, but of course Spider-Man takes them all down. Uh, but in that, oh, although a lot of the villains are captured, uh, Matt Gargan, I believe, gets away temporarily. Uh, but then we find out later in Civil War that he actually has been captured and that he makes a deal in order to get back out on the streets. In the Civil War miniseries that came out by Mark Millar, which had Captain America and you know Tony Stark on opposite sides, obviously, they made a movie about it. They did a different version, obviously, in the movie. But in the comic books, they were on different sides over this registration act, much like the movie had, but it involved other superheroes. And Spider-Man obviously got involved. He sided with Tony Stark at first, and he took off his mask and revealed himself to the world as Peter Parker, which turned out to be a big mistake and led to some really crappy stories, uh, some good stories at first, and then some crappy ones uh, after that, unfortunately for Spider-Man fans. Uh, but. Uh, did bounce back eventually. And I actually like a lot of the Spider-Man stuff that comes out now, although I haven't read the Nick Spencer stuff, uh, but I have liked some of the dance lot run uh, tremendously. So um, so with this now in at the Civil War time though, we don't know what happened to Venom and why would we? At, th at this point, the light is shown on Captain America and the heroes. But as the story progresses, I thought Mark Millar came up with a really neat thing, which was having Tony Stark, uh, although this does make Tony Stark look a little less redeemable, but Tony Stark has this plan where he worked out with other villains. So villains who are willing to be rehabilitated can side with Tony Stark and hunt down Captain America and the heroes. And one of these villains that gets you know recruited into this program is Venom. So Matt Gargan as Venom has now shows up and he's kind of working on Tony Stark's side and he's going after Spider-Man particularly because Spider-Man has decided, you know what, I'm not going to be on Tony's side anymore. I'm going to flip sides and go and side with Captain America because deep down I think that's the right thing to do and I like what he's standing for and I wish I didn't make this mistake and at the cost of the whole world knowing who I am, now everyone's going to come after me on a personal level and on a superhero level and so I need to, you know, try to protect my family and get them safe first and then worry about myself. And in, in the midst of all that, is when he gets attacked by a bunch of villains uh, and then he ends up on the doorstep of Captain America who saves his life. Um, so in this we have Venom and he is now on the side of the initiative on the you know on Tony Stark's side and he has decided to play ball essentially and he is coming after all the heroes because to him he's like dude I get now I get permission to like like the biggest obstacle I have running around is Venom is that I'm going to be taken down by some crazy hero because but now I'm getting permission to go hunt down these heroes and even though I can't kill and eat them I can at least take them down uh, in the name of Uncle Sam and so Matt kind of gets on board with this and he kind of likes it and so he goes after the heroes and that's kind of all we really see of him in Civil War is him fighting against the heroes no real arc there but he does slink away again at the end so at the end of the Marvel Knights run he kind of slinks away but he gets captured as we find out the government gets him and they make a deal with him but this time he actually does get away and there's no way to track him or find him or anything like that so he's starting to you know, he's back out on the road, back out on the run, and trying to formulate his next plan, which we're going to get to here in this one shot called Civil War Choosing Sides, which came out right after the ending of Civil War and kind of sets up the next year or two of storylines that we get with Matt Gargan. In the pages of Civil War Choosing Sides, we have Mark Guggenheim writing the story, and he does throw a little bit of, uh, you know, like, 
throw some references out to his other friends and writers and producers. If you don't know Mark Guggenheim, he's produced a lot of the CW shows like Arrow and stuff. And he actually does mention Greg Berlanti in this. Uh, there's a moment where um, where Matt Gargan, it starts off and he's in a house in like upstate New York or something. And there's all these guards swarming around the house. They're getting ready to take him, you know, dead or alive. And uh, they're on obviously a mission here. They're got, they got their orders uh, from a pie, from the initiative and from everyone to go and retrieve Matt Gargan again. And so they're coming to this house. They've narrowed him down to this location. And meanwhile, he's in there, he's on the phone and he's just talking to like an agent. He, I guess he got an agent on the run and he's like, look, I want to sell my life story. I want people to know J. Jonah Jameson created me. I want, you know, to know uh, I was a sympathetic. I want them to paint me in a sympathetic light to see me as Scorpion. I want my my right my, you know, my movie rights out there, my life rights to become a movie. I want uh, Brad Meltzer to write the novel version of it. I want Greg Berlanti to produce the movie or TV show version of it. So he's name dropping all these people. Mark Guggenheim is and putting all of his friends in the book, which is fine. If I was you know writing or drawing a comic book, I would probably do things like this too sometimes. Um, but anyway, so you have Matt Gargan trying to give his life rights away and he's signing the deal and he's like, all right, make it happen. Let's do it really quickly because I'm about to get captured by the government. So I want to make sure this deal is, you know, going through and full on. So his lawyer or representative or whatever is like, yes, we got the rights. You're good. And he's like, all right, good. I'm going to call you back. And right as that happens, the doors bust in and the, you know, the guards come in and they all aim their guns at Matt Gargan. They're like, we're taking you dead or alive. And he's like, you know what? I don't really want to talk to you. He's like, this is unit one and unit two. I don't want to talk to you guys. You're, you're kind of bottom of the list. So what he does, he's like, why don't you from unit one, kill everyone in the room. And they're like, what? And then all of a sudden the guy turns his gun and fires and kills all the other soldiers. And the guy's like, wait, why? Did, how did I do that? He's like, the, the, the file said nothing about you having mind control powers. And he's like, dude, I don't have mind control. And he's like, I have my control. And you see the symbiote like formed around the guard moving his body like a puppet, <laughs> which is was really insane. And the one credit I will give to not only Guggenheim here, but also uh, uh, Warren Ellis in the next Thunderbolts run we'll talk about in future episode, uh, you see them do really interesting stuff with the symbiote and you see Matt Gargan get really creative with it. Um, and then also see him just be an animal and eat people too. But you see pretty interesting things. So I thought this was really cool and a cool use of the symbiote. And so, you know, Mac, you know, pr you know, told the suit to do that and kill everyone. And then he snapped uh, the last guard's neck. And then now that those, you know, unit one and unit two were down, unit three is being sent in and unit three is Songbird and Radioactive Man. And so they show up, they're from the Thunderbolts and they have aligned themselves with the government. And they said, look, we are past villains who have become heroes and we're willing to work with a new team of Thunderbolts if you'll let us and we'll work for the government. And uh, and they have a new leader, which we're gonna find out in the Thunderbolts run who their new leader is. But for the, you know, for the time being, we have them coming to Venom. And he says, you know what? Uh, you know, I want to sign up. Like, they're like, hey, we're here to take you down. We're here to arrest you and everything. He's like, no, 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 no. I know the deal. You guys are looking for more members of your new Thunderbolts team, and I want in. And so right there we have uh, Matt Gargan set all this stuff up, got his life rights out there, has money coming his way, uh, all these things that he's working on. And then now he's like, you know what? Now it's time. Let's get into this. I want to work for the government, and I want to, you know, track down superheroes like I did during Civil War. And if I have to do it with you two weirdos, I'm totally down for it. So you see what kind of character Matt Gargan is and kind of how he's, you know, working with the symbiote and what kind of, kind of the fun he's having. He's like a kid with a new toy at first, but you're going to see that with the symbiote, he quickly deteriorates. And over the course of the Thunderbolts run, you're going to see some really dark things come out of this character. Uh, and then also kind of the bounce back when he starts to have fun again is when Bendis takes over and starts writing Dark Avengers, which to me is one of my favorite runs of Bendis's. I know I'm hard on that guy a lot, but his like 16 or 18 issues of Dark Avengers was is easily some of my favorite stuff he did. So I cannot wait till we get to that story arc and the fun that Matt Gargan starts to have again now that he not only gets to impersonate Venom, but he also gets to impersonate Spider-Man. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But let me know what you think. Are you a fan of Matt Gargan? What do you think of these stories? Have you read any of them? I want to hear your opinions down below as always. If you have a different opinion than me, let me know as well and we can talk about it down there. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you with more Matt Gargan in the future. Peace.